This question comes from frustrated in flushing. I am noticing a theme with so many of these questions that uh, get written or called into you. A lot of people are frustrated. <laughs> There's so many. Well, Blair, so nobody many. calls just to say, <laughs> you think people, I just sit there and people are calling right. and wishing you a good day. Completely like, at peace in Clinton right. Township. Right. I was just calling to see how you were. <laughs> right, calm and in a meditative state. How's right. it going? Nobody ever calls like calm from Clausen. No. Uh -oh. Okay, but That's frustrated not. from flushing uh -huh. as to say that if I want to make an offer on a home, can I still have a home inspection even though I have agreed to buy the home in its current condition? The realtor, hmm, the realtor says I cannot okay. do an inspection. What gives from frustrated in flushing? So the, so the realtor said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you know how we feel about certain realtors. I always have to do that main disclaimer. There are a lot of great realtors out there. Yes. Um, here's the thing. What does your purchase agreement say? Right. If your purchase agreement has an inspection clause in it, which allows you to do an inspection, you need to go and do the inspection. In fact, I would encourage you to have an inspection on your property. Mm -hmm. regardless if you're going to take the property in its current condition. Right. See, they're, they're not uh, you know, mutually exclusive. They're dependent on each other. Go get the inspection, find out what's going on with the property. And if you like what you see, whether it's a, you know, a roof that's falling in and you're told you got to repair it within the next two years, you can still take that property in its current condition. But right. at least you know. I did my inspection. I have to replace the roof in two years. I mm -hmm. did my inspection. The, the foundation, pardon me, leaks. I did my inspection. There's tons of asbestos coming out of my closets. Whatever it is, you did the inspection. Right. Do right. the inspection. I feel like, what's that What's that lady's name for a minute? She um, She's the financial advisor on CNN. She was like, do the inspection. Uh, I forgot her name, but I'll come up with it shortly. Okay. But here's the thing. <laughs> People don't realize it's, it's late at night and we get a little loopy, but uh, <laughs> do the inspection and you're taking, the, the thing about that is when you take it as is, um, you're saying to the seller, whatever the results are for, from the inspection, I'm not going to come back to you seller and ask you to do any of the repairs. Right. I agree right. to buy it in its current condition, okay? <clears throat> but it still should be subject to the inspection period, yes. right? Yeah. Those people who... The only people who should buy a home without an inspection are those people who are like licensed contractors and are very confident in everything that they see and they can do everything on their own. <clears throat> they can make a decision or they have a family member or friend who can help them with that. Sure. Um, but they're still doing an inspection, right? They're still looking at the house. Um, Performing your own inspection, right. right. Right, I mean, if you're comfortable with that, go right ahead, but do the inspection. Right. And. Right. Um, uh, then when you close, you, you have only yourself to blame if you do not do an inspection and took the home in its current condition. Right. Or if, you know, I had a client once, they bought a home. It was really sad. They bought a home and the uh, foundation had termites. Oh. It was really infested. Now, I didn't realize that in Michigan, you could have uh, like termite infestation to the extent that these people did. I know down South, it's really a big issue, but here in Michigan, I don't know, for some reason, I thought they died in the winter. Uh, it shows you what I know. But here's the thing. So they bought this house because they really wanted it. So they waived the inspection and they bought it in this, as this condition. Well, they found out later that the whole thing was riddled with termites. Goodness. Could not be, could not be salvaged. The, the amount of money to put into the home was like $80,000 for the structural repair. And they said, well, we were told that we were buying it in as is condition. And so therefore we weren't allowed to have an inspection. Oh no. And I'm like, no, that's not how it works. So, right. Yeah, right. Do the inspection. Right, do the, do the inspection, do yeah. the inspection. So, yeah. right. So uh, that would be, that would be really frustrating. That was so, heartbreaking for those people. Right, right. So side note on the comment of the realtor, says and 
as David said, disclaimer, there are really, really great agents out there. However, they're not practicing law. They're, they're a sales representative selling you a home. And, and even the contracts that these agents are, are using and handing back and forth between, you know, prospective buyer, seller, et cetera. Um, those, those contracts should be interpreted by someone who legally interprets contracts, hence, you know, a contract attorney, real estate attorney. Right. Um, yeah. And that, and that's too bad. You know, that's too bad that, uh, this frustrating, this frustration has been thrown in there because absolutely, absolutely. Like what you said, just because Mm -hmm. it says you're buying it in current as is condition that all that means is the seller is not interested in doing anything else to the house, take it or leave it. And that's what your inspection tells you. Am I going to take it or am I going to leave it? Your inspection gives you that, um, period of diligence to, to legally walk away if you find something that's going to be over your head. So do the inspection. Yeah, do the inspection. I forgot her name, but it will come to me. Uh, (laughs) The one thing is, so it hasn't come to me though. The one thing I want to tell you is that if you look um, in most good purchase agreements, first of all, um, just to edify, real estate agents are sales commission driven agents. Their whole job is to make a commission off of the sale of the property. Now, they do have certain responsibilities and duties to their clients, whether they be a seller or a buyer. But one of their duties is not to provide legal advice. Right. And so in the better contracts I do see, maybe I'm partial, it will say in a clause, it says, the parties to the undersigned contract or the undersigned parties to this contract have consulted with their attorneys before signing this contract. Mm -hmm. And so many people sign it. And then when things go wrong, the first thing I'll say is, well, what attorney did you call to review this contract? And it seems like there's this, like like the law, it's almost like in, in the inverse. The more the property, the more expensive the property is, uh, the fewer times that people actually go and get an attorney, it's like the craziest thing. Something. The, you know, the there are people though they go, oh, it's you know, fifteen thousand dollar lot that I'm buying. I don't need an attorney. But I, I will tell you that um, I had that scenario, and it was a vacant piece of property, but it was a commercial piece. And when they called me, they're like, I don't know why I really need an attorney, but I guess you know, it's fifteen grand. I think I'll. I just thought I, you know, do I need an attorney? I said, well. On a vacant piece of property, did they ever give you a vacant land disclosure statement? And he's like, no. I go, well, then I think you need an attorney. And I gave him the form and it came back, believe it or not, that it was contaminated. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yep. Well, you know, the guy, and I, when it came back, the guy, it, there used to be a, some type of uh, like machine shop on this area, like um, creosote or something. I, they used a chemical there. And uh, and I said, so you happy you use an attorney? Because if you didn't, you'd be responsible for the cleanup, which could cost you millions of dollars. Yeah. So there, there are definitely problems with that. Yeah, if you can afford an attorney uh, to review your real estate documents, it's not terribly expensive. If you're buying a property for anything over $10,000, it's worth having a, an attorney review it, a, a real estate attorney. Mm-hmm. Don't have a criminal attorney review it. Right. Don't have a personal injury attorney review it. Don't have a traffic violation uh, ticket attorney um, review it. Definitely don't have an adoption, you know, child adoption attorney review your real estate contract. You know who you should have review. For real <laughs> have you had somebody do that oh, before? Use oh a God, all the time. child People adoption. Like, oh my God, we have. No, I mean we've had you know. <laughs> Funny enough, we've had criminal attorneys, like people have hired criminal attorneys to review their documents, like uh, or like in litigation. Mm-hmm. And it's called staying in your own lane. Right. You know, I don't right. do criminal law. You've heard me talk about that before. But, you know, uh, we laugh when we see, uh, you know, in litigation, we see an opposing law firm who's so practiced, let's say, is uh, criminal law. This, this is actually just happening right now. 
and we are real estate attorneys dealing with the real estate matter. And to be fair, I mean, well, I, I mean, at risk of sounding a mask, we are mopping the floor with these people. Mm-hmm. Because we know all the legal theories that deal with real estate. We've been down this road, not once, not twice, hundreds and hundreds of times. So um, we also have a personal injury attorney who stepped into our arena recently. Uh, and, you know, there's some great personal injury attorneys out there. They're usually very good trial attorneys because uh, that's part of their business. But guess what? You step into our arena, we're going to show you a thing or two. That's right. So the same that's reason right. that I don't take auto cases and I don't take dog bite cases. I don't take malpractice cases. I only do two things. I take real estate cases and issues related to probate and finance that concern real estate. That's it. So yes, these people need to or should take their purchase okay. agreement to a real estate attorney. All right. 